If you've ever been on an airplane, you would have experienced turbulence. For nervous flyers, turbulence can be frightening, especially severe turbulence. Some might even think that these strong forces would be enough to break the aircraft. While it's not a comfortable or enjoyable experience, modern jetliners are built to withstand the tremendous strain. As long as you buckle up, there is usually nothing to fear but fear itself. In reality, airplanes, especially large airliners, are built with enough strength to withstand almost all naturally occurring turbulence. But before we dive into the types and tips to go through it, let's understand what turbulence is. It may seem like we're gliding through nothing at all up at 35,000 feet. We also tend not to consider what we're surrounded by as we walk, sit at our desks, or fiddle about in the garden. However, air as a substance is far from empty space. It is a gaseous substance, albeit invisible to the naked eye. Earth's atmosphere's air comprises about 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen, along with lesser amounts of other gases such as carbon dioxide and hydrogen. While the air gets thinner, the higher planes fly, as the approximate boundary where the atmosphere ends and space begins at about 328,000 feet, air as a substance is still prevalent outside our window seat. As a gas, the air is subject to change caused by weather, the mix of events that happen daily in the atmosphere. The sun's uneven heating of the Earth causes air currents to move in different ways at different times of the year. They move up and down in ripples, changing speed, intensity and direction. When an airplane passes through these changes, things can get bumpy, and that's how you have turbulence. Some main factors specifically can cause turbulence. Wind shear. This happens when two neighboring areas of air move in different directions. This type of turbulence hits the plane when entering or exiting a jet stream, crossing over temperature differences when it's close to a storm front, or hitting the hot air residue from another plane. Frontal turbulence is caused by lifting warm air as it hits a cold front and is most common in winter. Mechanical turbulence is dictated by varying surfaces on the ground, causing the wind to pool and form vertical eddies. Thermal turbulence mainly affects planes when they are closer to the ground, such as during takeoff or coming in for a landing, as hot air updrafts from Earth's surface form pillars. What's known as clear air turbulence, or CAT, can be caused by any of these factors that make the wind form bends through its flow causing it to move at different speeds at the inner and outer parts of the wave. It can hit without warning and be quite severe, which is why you are asked to keep your seatbelt on while seated. Another type of turbulence is the wake. If you've observed a ship or a boat moving through the water, you would have noticed that it generates a trail behind it. This trail is called the wake. Airplanes also leave a trail or a wake behind them as they pass through the air. This wake is generated by something called wingtip vortices. An aircraft that encounters the tip vortices of another aircraft can experience wake turbulence. This wake generally results in a rolling motion, induced roll, and the intensity of this roll highly depends on the strength of the tip vortices generated by the lead aircraft. The wingtip vortices or tip vortices are generated due to the difference in pressure between the upper and lower surface of the wing. The upper surface of a wing is at a lower pressure and the lower surface is at a higher pressure. It's also this pressure difference that enables a wing to generate lift. As the wing's lower surface is at a higher pressure than the atmosphere, the air tends to flow outwards towards the tip of the wing. At the same time, as the wing's upper surface is at a lower pressure, the air tends to flow inwards. At the tip of the wing, thus, there is a swirling motion that is triggered by the mixing of the high and low pressure air, which in turn produces vortices. When the wing is viewed from behind, the right wing produces an anti-clockwise vortex, while the left wing produces a clockwise vortex. The right and left wingtip vortices generally remain separated by about three quarters of the wingspan of the aircraft that generates them and they tend to extend to about 9 nautical miles behind the plane. In still air, they sink downwards to about 500 to 1,000 feet below the aircraft's altitude. Wingtip vortices are at their fullest when an aircraft is at the point of takeoff and landing 
because these are the points at which an aircraft is usually at a lower altitude and high speed condition. So pilots, particularly those flying behind a much larger aircraft than theirs, must be cautious during these phases of the flight. There are different categories for the severity of turbulence. Light chop is rapid and somewhat consistent in bumpiness. No altitude change is experienced as a result. During light turbulence, there are momentary changes to altitude and attitude. However, passengers can still walk more or less comfortably around the cabin. Moderate chop is, as the name would imply, a slightly more intense version of the continuous rhythmic bumps characterizing a light chop. Moderate turbulence means bigger bumps and changes, and passengers could lose their balance if they move about. However, the aircraft remains under control at all times. During severe turbulence, which is characterized by significant abrupt changes in altitude or attitude, passengers can be thrown against their seatbelts, or if they're not wearing them, injured as they're tossed upwards or forwards. The aircraft will momentarily be out of the pilot's control. If the aircraft were to encounter extreme turbulence, it would be tossed about and almost impossible to control. The force of it could cause some structural damage, and smaller general aviation planes could even break apart. You may be relieved to hear that, according to Time magazine, pilots encounter about five minutes of severe turbulence during 10,000 hours of flight. Modern radar systems, weather prediction equipment, and cockpit crew training make it very rare to run into. However, occasionally there are instances of severe clear air turbulence. According to the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, in-flight turbulence is the leading cause of passenger injuries in non-fatal aviation accidents. More often than passengers, who are hopefully strapped into their seats, the flight attendants, making sure that they are, can get injured. If the turbulence is expected to get worse, the flight crew will inform the cabin crew and advise whether they need to be seated. If it is light, service resumes. Moderate or heavy turbulence would require all carts to be secured in the galley. The cabin crew will return to their jump seats and be strapped in. The flight crew or senior crew member will then advise when it is safe to move about the cabin again. The passengers need to wait until the seatbelt sign is switched off. If the cabin crew is still moving around the cabin, it's nothing to be worried about. If the cabin crew is seated, it's just a precaution for a few minutes until we've passed through the area of bad weather. The severity of injuries ranges from broken ankles to head trauma from being thrown against the overhead bins. When turbulence strikes suddenly, those passengers who do not respond to the request to keep their seatbelts fastened at all times, or who happen to be queuing up to use the lavatories, are also at risk. Notable examples of this were when 11 people were injured on an Emirates flight between Dubai and Singapore in October 2019, and 27 on an Aeroflot flight from Moscow to Bangkok in May 2017 when passengers were thrown into the aisles. But these are very, very rare occurrences. For a modern jetliner, the dangers presented by turbulence are minuscule when it comes to the aircraft itself. Wings, for instance, are designed to withstand 1.5 times as much load as they would usually experience during a flight. Planes are constructed to excellent standards of stress and strain resilience. Flying is what they do best, after all, and what they were built for. Pilots also report turbulence occurrences, allowing other aircraft to steer clear. Should you be one of the travelers who tense up at the mere thought of turbulence, consider choosing your aircraft and seat wisely. You could also find some deep breathing exercises and download them to your phone to help you get through the worst of the bumps. While turbulence occurrences are set to increase in the coming years, several airlines are working to deliver smoother experiences. For example, Delta Airlines has shared that its services are witnessing less turbulence. The Atlanta-based operator released a flight weather viewer app. The feature gives its crew a better understanding of the circumstances they encounter worldwide. Overall, this solution assists pilots in making better decisions during their flights. In more technical terms, there are three main loads regarding the aircraft's structural safety and integrity. The limit load is the maximum load the plane might see in service. 
The ultimate load is the load at which structural failure can occur. And the safety factor is the ratio of ultimate load to limit load. When an aircraft is pushed to its limit load, its structure should be able to handle it with no issue. However, when taken to the ultimate load, structural failure can occur. The safety factor occurs between these two limits. When within the safety factor limit, permanent deformations of aircraft structures are very unlikely. The higher the safety factor, the stronger the airframe and aircraft structures must be. This adds to the weight of the plane. Due to this reason, the safety factor cannot be made infinitely high. The loads on an aircraft are given in terms of g-forces, which in technical terms is known as load factor or n. This equation represents it. Load factor, or n, equals lift divided by weight. This shows that as the lift increases, the load factor increases. For instance, if the lift is four times the weight, the load factor equals 4.0 or 4g. When designing airplanes, it must be within a maneuver envelope, also known as the VN diagram. The VN diagram, as shown above, is plotted with the load factor against the aircraft speed. There are three speeds of importance labelled in the graph. VA – maneuvering speed, VC – design cruise speed, and VD – design dive speed. The envelope in the diagram has its limit at the load limit of the aircraft. The most important thing to note here is the VA speed. This is the maximum maneuvering speed. When the aircraft is flown at or below this speed, the pilot can positively load their aircraft freely without risk of airframe damage. This is because if the pilot were to pull back on the controls recklessly, the plane would enter a stall before it sustains damage. Thus, VA is one of the most critical speeds in an aircraft, so pilots should take caution when maneuvering above this speed. What this all means is that engineers, pilots and all the crew that works from first planning the construction of the aircraft until the landing at your destination think about how to make your experience better either by creating safety protocols, calculations through equations, using technology or just calming you down when going through a shaky part of the flight. Turbulence can feel unpleasant and like a bumpy roller coaster ride. However, it's rarely something to be concerned about. Passengers may get nervous and panic, but the aircraft will not fall out of the sky. Aircraft are designed to withstand turbulence and pilots and cabin crew are trained to deal with it. If a passenger is worried, it's no problem to speak to the cabin crew, who will explain what turbulence is and that it's not something to worry about. It is a temporary discomfort, but perfectly normal. Have you ever had a scary moment of turbulence on a flight? What are your methods for dealing with turbulence? Tell us in the comments. Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.